What's up guys, Tano Brock here with another home studio tutorial. Today we're gonna dive into one of my favorite pieces of software and that is Logic Pro X. I think Logic is hands down the best DAW for people who are new to the world of recording and production. And there are a lot of beginner tutorials out there, but they all seem to be at least 20 minutes long and go into a lot of detail. And while that can be useful sometimes, I really think the best way to learn this stuff is to just get in there and get your hands dirty. So I'm gonna keep this as brief as possible and show you seven simple steps to get started. Alrighty, welcome back. So when you first open up Logic, you're gonna see this dialog box. Step number one, create an empty project. Logic gives you all these other options like project templates and demo projects, but I think the best way to learn is to just start with an empty slate. So choose an empty project and then select choose. Now you'll see this. Step number two is create some tracks. So there are really two types of tracks that we need to worry about. A software instrument track and an audio track. To put things simply, a software instrument track is basically a track that allows you to play any sort of sounds that are built into your computer. Logic comes with a huge library of sounds like pianos, synthesizers, drums, all sorts of stuff you can choose from. So if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can trigger the sounds with that, or you can even trigger them with your computer keyboard. So let's start off by creating a software instrument track and choosing empty channel strip. Now let's also create an audio track. So to do that, click this plus right here and then click this little picture of a microphone. Now an audio track is basically what we would use to record any sort of acoustic sound source. So if you have a microphone plugged into your audio interface and you want to record your voice or an acoustic guitar, or if you have an electric instrument like an electric guitar plugged directly into your interface, we're going to choose one of these tracks. So let's click this, choose input one for now, and click create. So now we got two tracks right here. Great. Step number three is to configure our preferences. So let's go up here to Logic Pro X, Preferences, and first thing, let's go to Advanced Tools. Click Show Advanced Tools, and then Enable All. This allows us to get the most out of Logic Pro. If we don't enable our advanced tools, we're basically looking at GarageBand. So make sure you do that. Next, go to your Audio Preferences and choose your audio interface as your output device and your input device. Let's keep the buffer size at 128 for now, processing threads automatic, process buffer range large, multi-threading, I like to keep it at playback tracks, summing, high precision, and rewire behavior playback mode. This is a way that I found to optimize Logic's performance so it uses less CPU power. Click apply changes and close out of preferences. All right, so first three steps, easy peasy. Done. Step number four is probably the most time consuming and most important step, and that is to just familiarize yourself with the basic workspace and tools. You can do a lot of exploring on your own, but I'll just give a brief explanation to get you started. So what you're looking at in front of you is your main logic workspace. This big gray area right here is your timeline. This is where you'll play through your project through time and bars and beats. This light gray column right here is where you'll see your tracks. As you can see, the two tracks we created are right there. This left column over here is our library. You can hide it and show it by clicking this button up here. For audio tracks, this is basically a library of presets. So if you choose one of these presets, Logic will automatically load this audio track with effects that it thinks will sound good for that particular source. For software instruments, this is your library of sounds. So we can pick what kind of sound we want to use, like bass, drum kit, piano, synthesizers, all sorts of stuff, and we can start playing that instrument with our keyboard. Another important tool you'll need to know about is this guy up here. This little eye is our inspector. So that brings up our information about our channel strips, our tracks, and our regions. If all that sounds like mumbo jumbo to you, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Basically, a channel strip is where we control the volume, panning, input, output, and effects for that particular track. So the left side right here will always show the channel strip for the current track selected. As you can see, when I switch between tracks, it switches. The right side here will always show our stereo output. Basically, all our tracks that we have here, as long as they say stereo output right here, are being fed into this one. So this is basically our single track that is our output of everything else. So moving on, we have this big section in the center. This is our transport section. So we got rewind, fast forward, stop, play, record, and cycle. Rewind and fast forward can be controlled with the comma and periods key. Stop can be return, and you'll notice if I'm not at the beginning of the section, the stop button becomes a go back to the beginning. So that's really useful. Click return to do that. Play is the space bar, record is R, cycle is C. 
Basically, what cycle is, is it allows us to select a portion of the timeline and loop it or cycle it. So if you have this on and you play, it'll loop this section. You can change the length of the section by pulling in the end like this, and you can move it around just by clicking and dragging. This dark blue window in the middle shows us all the properties we need to know about our project. What I like to do is click this little arrow on the right hand side and go to custom. This brings up a lot more information. So the first section of this shows the position of our playhead. That's this vertical line here that we can drag around that shows us where we are in our project. The top shows us seconds and minutes, and the bottom shows us bars and beats. The next section shows us the length and position of our cycle bar. So if we enable the cycle, you'll see it shows us it starts at bar 1, beat 1, and ends at bar 3, beat 1. If we move it, it'll correspond. The next section shows us our tempo. Right now that's at 120. Next we have our time signature, and next we have our MIDI activity meters. If we have a MIDI keyboard plugged in and I play a note, you'll see that shows up here. Lastly, we have our CPU meters. This will show us how much CPU load we have. So if you have a huge session with lots of tracks and lots of regions and lots of effects, you'll see a lot of activity up there. Next up, we got our metronome. This is super important because chances are when you're recording, you're gonna wanna record to a metronome so you stay in time. This is our count in button, which enables a one bar count in before you start recording. Next, we got our metronome controls. So the metronome should automatically be on click while recording. I think that's the best setting to keep it on, and I always pretty much keep it on that setting. All right, moving over to the right hand corner, we got a few more tabs we can open up. And that brings me to step five, and that is to mess around with loops. If we click this little button right here, it'll bring up our loop library. Now I really think this is a great way to get to know Logic and just start cutting things up and messing with audio. If you don't want to do this, that's fine. Record your own stuff, and I'll show you that in a second. But let's start with some loops so we can just have some content to work with right off the bat. We can click a loop to preview it. Nice, that sounds pretty groovy. So let's drag that in. And if we drag it below the tracks we created, it'll create its own new track. And you can see that the session tempo has automatically been changed to 100 BPM instead of 120. And that's because, as you can see here, that the original tempo of this loop is 100. So let's play our session so we can hear what we got. Great, but not that cool yet. Alright, so I want to zoom in on this so I can see it a bit closer. There are numerous ways to do that, but my favorite is to hold option and just scroll left and right. That way you can easily zoom in and out, vertically and horizontally. Now this loop is only two bars, and I want to loop it so it continues on and on. The way to do that is really simple. Just hover your mouse over the right hand corner of the region and drag forward. That'll loop it. You can zoom out to see your loops from further away. Sweet. So you can see that the first iteration of the region is white and the following loops are grayed out. Let's bring in another instrument to go with these drums. Nice, that sounds pretty groovy as well. So let's bring that in. Again, pull it in right below the tracks you already have and it'll create its own new track. Now you can see this is a software instrument loop as opposed to our drums, which is an audio loop. You can see the software instrument it's using right here is called Analog Swirl. So let's play these drums and the synth together. Sweet, sounds super 80s, I love it. All right, so let's say I don't want this fill every two bars. I only want it every four bars. What we're gonna do is chop this audio region in half and loop the first half, and then put the second half just every four bars. So put your playhead at bar two, right in the middle of the region, and click Command T to split the region in half. And we're gonna delete what we had previously looped. So let's drag the second half to bar four, and then let's hover over the upper right hand corner of our first half and loop it. Now we got four bars of drums with the fill in the fourth bar. Let's loop our synth to match that length. So you can really go to town with these loops and build up layers and layers and layers with Apple's loops. They have a lot of great content. But at a certain point, you're going to want to record your own original content. So that brings us to step number six, and that is record using a software instrument track. So let's go to the software instrument track we created, and let's pick a preset we want to use. So I think a nice lead synthesizer would go well with what we already have here. So let's go to synthesizer over here on the library tab, go to lead, and let's explore some of these to see what we like. <laughs> All right, I think I like this 80s sync lead. 
Let's stick with that. And I'm just going to record a simple lead line over this. So let's press R to record. We'll hear a four bar count in and then we're in. Awesome. That wasn't the most genius of synth lines, but it'll do for now. Let's double click this region to open up a detailed editor. So that brings up this where we can see a more detailed view of the region we just recorded. You can hide and show it by clicking these scissors up here. The first thing we want to do is quantize this. If you don't know what that is, that basically means making all these notes we played perfectly in time on the grid. In most contemporary, popular, and electronic music styles, you're going to want to quantize most things. So let's click a note. Command A to select all, and over here we have our time quantization tools. Most of the time you'll want to keep it on 16th note, but there are a lot of options of what you want your time quantization base to be. So let's click this Q right here, and boom, you can see it adjusts everything to the grid. Now let's play through our session to hear what it sounds like. All right, so we got our synth lead, our drum beat, and our kind of synth bass loop we got going on. That brings us to step seven, which is record using an audio track. Now let's go to this audio track we created before, and I got an electric guitar plugged into input one on my interface, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Now before we record, let's go to our preferences real quick to configure our input monitoring. Go to preferences, audio, and then go to the general tab. And we wanna make sure we check this button, input monitoring only for the focus track. Close out of preferences and grab your instrument or your microphone that you're going to record with. All right, so I got my guitar plugged into input one. You can make sure input one is selected in your track by going here, input, and choosing input one. Now, in order to record an audio track, you got to record enable the track. That just means clicking the R right here in the track header. In order to hear what you're recording, you have to enable input monitoring. That just means clicking the I right here next to the R. Now, if I play my guitar, we should be able to hear it. So another useful thing to know when recording an instrument is that Logic has a built-in tuner. You can go right up here to the right of the blue information window and click this little tuning button. That'll bring up the tuner, and if I play my guitar, I can tune it. All right, another thing I think it's really important to do before recording audio is make sure your project doesn't start at bar one. So right now our project does. So I'm gonna select all our regions by just dragging up from the corner and selecting all of them and move it over to bar two. You can see Logic automatically snaps to the bar and that's because our snap mode is on smart. For right now, just keep it on smart. It'll automatically snap to places you want it to. This will make sure that the beginning of our audio track that we record is not cut off. So I'm gonna put my playhead just before two and press record here. That way we'll get our one bar count in before one, one extra bar between one and two, and then we can start playing right at two without the beginning being cut off. All right, so now that we got everything set up in Logic, let's make sure that the input gain on our audio interface is set so our signal is not clipping. Basically, when we play our part, we want the signal to be well below zero and all green. If it's hitting the red, that means it's clipping. Looks good to me, so we're ready to record. I'm gonna press R to record, then I'll get a two bar count in and I'll start playing. All right, that sounds pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and name this track so we know what it is. I'm gonna call it Rhythm Guitar. So we got our four instruments. We got our synth lead, a rhythm guitar, drums, and our synth bass kind of thing. Now we probably want this whole groove to go on for a lot longer, so we wanna loop the whole thing. Now as you probably noticed, when I recorded the MIDI track, Logic automatically trimmed this to the perfect length, but with the audio track, that didn't happen. It just stops where I press the space bar. So we wanna trim it so it loops correctly. So let's put our playhead right at bar two, Press Command-T to trim, delete the beginning, put our playhead right at bar six, Command-T, and delete the end. Now we got everything the same length, but there's one more thing we gotta do before we loop this whole groove. Remember, we made these drums by combining a loop plus this fourth bar, so we gotta combine them. Let's select both regions by clicking and dragging, and then press Command-J to combine them and create a new audio file. Now if we zoom out a bit, and if we select all the regions by clicking and dragging from the lower corner, we can loop all of them at once. Hover over our right hand corner to find our loop symbol and then click and drag forward. Nice, now we have two loops of this awesome groove. So there's one big error we're making that we need to fix before I wrap up this video. If you notice when I play the project, 
Down here in our stereo output, it's clipping. It's 2.2 dB above zero, which is really bad. We gotta fix that. So let's open up our mixer by pressing Command 2, and then let's select all four instruments. And if I click and drag one of these volume faders, it'll bring them all down at once. So I'm gonna click and drag down about 5 dB. Now if I play the project, We're not clipping anymore. We're sitting at about negative 3 dB, which is a pretty good place for us to be sitting right now. There's a long conversation we can have about that, but that's for another video. All right, guys, those were my seven tips to get started in Logic. I hope that was useful. I hope you can jump into Logic now and start making awesome music. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions about what I should cover next. I'm going to follow this up with a lot more Logic tutorials on recording, producing, editing, mixing, and everything in between. So subscribe to the channel for updates. Stay safe and happy music making.